<laughs> one shot is all you get. This is the brand new, well, brand new to me, Smith & Wesson 22LR single shot. Now this guy is about 115 years old and it's probably the oldest 22 that I have done a video on. Let's get into the video. Smith & Wesson Single Shot 22 LR. Uh, this pistol has a story, and I like firearms that have stories. I guess it's a couple of weeks ago, we're gonna call this man Bruce, okay? Bruce sent me an email and said, I have something that you may be interested in. And uh, I was like, well, what do, you, what do you suggest that would be? And he said, I have a Single Shot 22 Smith & Wesson second gen or second model um, that belonged to my father. And he sent me a picture of it. And I was like, you know what? That is one beautiful pistol. Now I have never shot one of these. Only about 6,400 of these guys were ever made between the years of 1905 and 1909. And they were designed for target shooting. More importantly, one-handed target shooting. Now I'm gonna go ahead and say that I am not a one-handed target shooter, <laughs> okay? I have, I have taught myself to shoot two hands, but back then they did it one hand, the other hand in the pocket gripping their keys or whatever have you. But Bruce wanted me to have it. I have never met Bruce. Bruce, he said, this belonged to my dad. My dad recently passed away. I am now 70 years old and I want this gun to go to someone that would cherish it. And he said, he's been watching me for years and I can't believe it. He actually gave me this beautiful gem of a pistol because he knows I will take care of it. I will appreciate it. Never going to sell it or anything like that. But some of the most important firearms that I have in my collection are gifts that people just from the generosity of their heart gave them to me. And you may have those guns also, but let me shoot it a few times. I'm not going to go through a lot of ammo uh, in this video, but we are going to do a little bit of shooting, just a little bit. And this right here is what we're going to talk about here in just a second. All right, so this firearm is old. This firearm is 115 years old, and there's something going on with the firing pin. It usually takes two primer strikes in the same spot to set it off. I check the firearm after it doesn't go bang, and there's a good dent in the primer, but just not deep enough. So let me show you how you open it up. Right here on the rear sight, you simply press up on it and it breaks open, okay? Just like the old Smith & Wesson revolvers. This is basically the exact same gun as the revolvers, but without the cylinder. Then there's a couple other things, but it's the same design. They added in this extractor and this ejector all in one. You can simply press up and it will take the round out for you. Simple as that. It is a very simple design, but it works. Now I will tell you something about the sights. Uh, it shoots about, Mm, probably at about 50, 60 feet, it shoots about six inches high for me, okay? Uh, his father set up this sighting picture uh, for him and I am having a hard time shooting it, really hard time. So I'm having to take my front sight, put it all the way at the bottom of the rear sight and then put that in the middle of my target to hit. So I'm gonna try to hit a few more targets here. All right, one-handed. All right, let's go out at 100 yards. See if I can hit that steel plate at 100. See, there's that misfire. We'll figure to fire. There you go. So I can hit a full size silhouette at 100, but precision shooting, it can be a little difficult. All right. So I was aiming at that Firebird target on there, if you can see it. I don't know if you can see it or not. I think I missed it just a little left. Let me try it again. 
I don't know if I'll be able to hit this at this distance. Oh, I hit the, I hit right above it. All right, third time's a charm. Like I said, if, if the sights were even across the top and the front sight and the rear sight, and then I could put the front sight half, half my target with it, I could do a lot better. But how he had this set up for slow fire one hand, I guess he wanted to see all of his picture at whatever distance he was at. I can learn how to do it. Uh, it's gonna take me a little bit of time, but I think I can learn how to do it. It's always the second shot. Sometimes it goes off on the first shot. No, I missed it by like that much. All right, enough shooting at that. Let's talk a little bit more about the firearm. It does have your walnut checker to grips, and it does have a beautiful high bluing. I wish they made a lot of firearms still with high bluing. Some manufacturers still make them, but everything now is like Cerakoting, and it's just something about high blue polish. And the barrel is 10 inches long. And back in the older days, you gotta remember that shooting was, <sighs> shooting was a pastime, okay? This was before video games and TVs and, and everything. Shooting was a pastime, okay? You know, when people had shoot-offs and there were tournaments and stuff, it was in the newspaper. You know, it was a big ordeal. People got really, really good with these kind of pistols. And it kind of got me into shooting how I shoot now. All right, I hit that little target down there. It, it kind of got me shooting into precision shooting. That's kind of what I'm trying to talk about. But Bruce's father got extremely good with this pistol. So good indeed. Look what else he sent me with the pistol. Now this means just as much to me as the pistol does. This is a medal that says USRA, which I assume stands for United States Rimfire Association. And it says Marksman Team and Slow Fire Championship. And on the back, it has Class A first place won by Philadelphia. And this is from 1953. So that is an amazing piece to put with this pistol so all right let's do some more shooting and unfortunately you know since only 6400 of these were made uh, they made a gen 1 and they perfected a little bit better with the gen 2 this is the model that i have is the gen 2 they came out with a gen 3 which made it double action okay why you would want to shoot a one-handed precision pistol in double action I don't know, but they did. And they later came out with a straight pull design or the fourth generation of this pistol. And it had a pullback. Instead of a, a hammer that you caught downwards, they had a hammer that you pulled back. Sort of like your old cricket, you know, 22 crickets. All right. I can't imagine, I, I don't know. Some of you guys may know in the comments, you know, when you're shooting this slow fire one-handed, how far are the targets? I think they're 50 meters, okay? I've never shot one, so I don't really know. They may be uh, different distances, but I think they're 50 meters, and I think you have like 30 seconds to fire one shot. Don't know. I could be wrong. More than likely I am. But I'm going to try to hit that four-inch plate at 100 yards. Um, one-handed, I am not going to blaspheme this firearm and shoot it two-handed like that. I'm just not going to do it, and I am not good one-handed, but I will try to hit that four-inch plate at 100 yards with this old Smith. Oh, right underneath it. All right, I won't try this long. I'll try three shots. I didn't miss it by much. And if I had these sights, if they were sighted in for me, I think I could do a whole lot better. Right underneath it. All right, one more try. Man, that gets me. Oh, I'm talking, I just missed it like this much. But what else can we say about it? Um, you know, there's just not a lot of information on these guns. And in my opinion, these are some of the coolest 22s 
that were ever, ever made. So yeah, let's shoot it a few more times. I got a few more rounds here. You're not gonna shoot it fast. And if you practice, you can shoot it accurately. Oh, I hit the very top of that Firebird, but it didn't go off. I did hit it at least though. All right, we got a few more rounds of ammunition here. Let's just shoot them up here. Let's take our time, see if we can hit some small targets. I'm gonna have to get that fixed. Ooh. Oh, there we go. I hit one of those little silhouettes. That's probably about 60 feet or so. Let's go out of 100. Now, this trigger is extremely light, and I'm gonna measure it here in just a minute to show you guys how light it is. There we go, 100 yards. Okay, so I fired that round. I've got an empty casing in there, so it will be okay for me to dry fire at once. You never want to dr dry fire a rim fire unless stated by the manufacturer, and there's only a few manufacturers that will tell you that it's okay to dry fire. But as good rule of thumb, it's never good to dry fire. So that's why I left this empty casing in here. All right, let me clear this out. Let's see how light this trigger is. One point six ounces. Let me try it again. See, it feels a little bit lighter than that to me. Oh yeah, 1.2 ounces. So I think it consistently breaks around 1.2, 1.3 ounces. It breaks very, very lightly and very clean. It's, it almost surprises me when it goes off because one, I don't know when it's gonna go off because I have to shoot it twice almost every time. All right, it's, this is just a, a, would be a neat gun. Okay, if you're a collector like I am, just a neat gun to have in your collection. Uh, one, because they are kind of rare. Uh, two, it's a rimfire. And three, not many people make single shot 22s anymore. You're not gonna go through a lot of ammo really quick like you would a semi-automatic. All right. Uh, oh, well. I can hit a few things with it. Uh, I guarantee you if you gave me a couple of weeks uh, of practice, slow fire, and I could adjust these sights a little bit better for my eyes, I could do a lot better, but what a piece of history. You know, there are some, still some really good people in this world. You know, there's a lot of bad junk that goes on, a lot of bad people in this world, but you know, when someone contacts you that you've never met before and they just want to gift something to you that was their father's, you know, that, that, I'm at a loss of words when, when someone would do something like that that's so selfless. But thank you, Bruce. Thank you very much for the pistol. I will keep it in my collection forever. Guys, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions whatsoever, put them in the comments below. Until next time, y'all be safe and keep blinking. I know what you're probably asking yourself. Blinkster, do you think you could split a playing card at 40 feet with it? Not bad for a 115-year-old pistol, and the answer is yes.